Hi everyone, this is Elisa. I haven't made a video in a long time, but I'm a little behind in my blogging for Write 6x6, so I'm going to make an easy, quick video. <laughs> it is quick and easy. So the title of this is um, Collaborative Group Projects and Online and Hybrid Classes. Is there value in having students do group projects? Well, I go back and forth about whether or not I should dump the one that I use or if I should keep it. Students in general hate it, but I think there is value, and it's a lesson students need to experience. So things don't always go the way that they should, and students can learn a lot from having to deal with this adversity. And I laugh when I say that because I don't think I've ever had a semester where all the groups went smooth sailing. Something always comes up. So I've been using this group project in my English 102 hybrid course for about two years now, and I think it teaches students a lot about collaborating, working in groups, and sharing in the learning process with others. Um, and this is important because I'm going to have them go through 12 weeks of this solo research project, and before I send them off to do that, I want them to go through this four-week project in groups of four where they sort of model that whole process. And students do say at the end that that four-week period did sort of set them up for success for their solo projects, but they didn't like working in the groups. So I'm going to go ahead and, and walk you through what I do, uh, mostly using Canvas and a lot of tools in Canvas. I'll talk about collaborations, groups, um, some other tools that are integrated, or you, we, we call them apps that we add into Canvas. One's called Perusal and the other is Noodle, tool, Noodle Tools. Everything's free. So the purpose of this project is to teach students the process for writing an argumentative research paper. And I do it in groups of four, like I mentioned, over a four-week period. And the only thing that they don't have to do in this four-week period is the research. Um, but I do provide all the research for them. I give them 10, 10 articles. I choose the topic. And so I eliminate a lot of the, the difficulty. But they still learn a lot about um, the process of creating this eight to 10 page paper. The paper for the group is not as long, but the outline and the process is the same. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in and show you what this is all about. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go through. This is part one. And so with part one, I'm just going to show you uh, or talk about what I do. And then if you want some more details, I'll make a part two. That'll be a separate video that'll go into um, how things are, are done. Okay, so basically this is in Canvas and this is the module one overview. It tells students that this is a four week module. And so it's a hybrid class, 50% in class, one day a week, 50% online. And so in class we go through this and basically I talk about what our goals are and what the process will entail. Um, it'll list all the major assignments in this module. And then I show them the breakdown of what we'll be doing for the next four weeks. And then when we go in, we'll start with week one uh, again, students are reminded about their time commitment and so forth, and then we talk about the objectives and the schedule. So unit, each unit is equivalent to a week. And so I like to set students up for success, especially when they're going to be working in groups and by themselves in the online environment. So I tell them what they need to do before class, what they're going to do in class, and what needs to be due outside of class by Friday. And so those are all clearly listed there. And then as they scroll through these unit uh, folders. Some In some classes I call them weak folders, uh, but they go through, they get a quick introduction, and then the content is there for them. So you can see the lessons and then the assignment and any online reading or videos. Okay, so the process is that we, in class, watch this video and have a quick discussion about this. And we then read an article and we practice doing annotations and we do those annotations in a tool called Perusal, which again, in part two, if you want to watch it, I can show you how that's integrated in. But it's basically a group uh, area where students can go in and annotate together. So these are all student annotations. If I go into the first article, you'll see that as I scroll through, you'll see where students have annotated in the doc document. Okay, and so they did this together as a class, as a group, and so it, it teaches them that when we do the research, you need to read the articles, you need to comment on them, choose elements and tag it, or whatever it is um, that's important for you, or for them. <laughs> okay, so after we do that, we talk about the lessons that are going to help them, and they do this on their own, with the lessons for understanding the research process and how to annotate text. 
And then the last thing we do before they leave is I get, let them get started with the first assignment. And the first assignment is organizing their groups. So they get about 15 minutes at the end of the first face-to-face -face class to set up their groups and to get this assignment going. So the way I do that is I, I go into people and I create group projects and I assign them all to a color group, red, green, blue, purple, yellow, orange. And I assign students, four students, to each of those groups. And then I share this document or I show them this page, this assignment, and then they follow through. Now the collaborations, when they click this link, I'll show you that in just a second, it'll take them to a Google Doc that I created for them. And so in this document, it instructs them to annotate articles, write summaries, and then format a working bibliography. And in order for them to do this online, they have to have a space to do that, and that space has to be set up first. So these are all the Google Docs that I have set up within Canvas. And when students click on that, it'll look like this. So they'll see their group project for Team Red, and then all of these blanks. And so once they click on their group, they will assign roles. The roles are defined at the bottom. Okay, so they'll decide who's going to be the resource manager, the facilitator, recorder, and also who is the team leader. And so they write their names in there. They put their phone numbers and emails and their Noodle Tools personal ID. Um, this should be their ME ID, but it's not always. So just in case it's not, I have them listed here. Because uh, students are going to have to share their Noodle Tools projects for, uh, with each other, and they need to know that information. Okay, so this document that was created and all four members will have access to then guides them through. So it's very detailed. There's also links. So if a student doesn't know how to do tags, then they can click this link and it'll teach them about tags. Okay, so they will assign an article. Person A is going to read Article 1. Person B is going to read Article 2. And then they'll go back into perusal for Assignment 1 and click on Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, or 4, whichever one they are assigned. So each group member has an article, but then each group is represented within the article. Okay, so after they set that up, after they set that up and complete all of the steps, Activity 3, annotate the article, that's in perusal. Activity 4, they're going to format their citations. Well, to do that, they're going to go to Noodle Tools, right? And if they don't know how to do it, again, I have a link for them to help them do it. But again, they signed up for Noodle Tools during the orientation process, so they should all have their accounts already. So when they click on it, they'll be able to click over into Noodle Tools and create a project and get started with annotating their articles. So again, more on that on part two. Okay, and then the last part of this is Activity 5. They're going to write the summaries and put those in Noodle Tools as well. So basically this first part is organizing the groups and then creating a annotated bibliography with uh, 8 to 10 articles. So if I go back into my Canvas, and so that was week one. Once they do that and they've proven they can work together with annotating the articles and getting that group collaboration document filled out, we move on to week two. And in week two, again, I give them a time estimate on what they should spend on this, their objectives. And for this week, they're going to be uh, reading four more articles. You can see them here. We have in-class activity where we learn about arguments since they're going to be writing an argumentative essay. And then we also go through uh, some of the group project work for their next step, assignment number two. So again, there are a couple of lessons that they will do on their own, and then we look at the assignment. So the assignment is to create this annotated bib. So they now have eight articles, and each person in the group is responsible for two articles, four people, that's eight articles. And so when I go into my Noodle Tools, what I do is I've created an inbox, and then students will join my inbox. And these are the groups. So you can see there's the yellow group, the red group, the orange group. And I can see that they have nine sources, and there were, there were eight to ten. So most of them were successful in getting at least seven. Uh, when there are less, that means someone in the group sort of bailed on them. But I can see the blue group had ten. And I can see the members of the group. I have that blurred out so you can see them. I can see their notes that they're taking. 
And then when I can go in and I can actually see who's doing what within this Noodle Tools group. And so that's really nice because I can click on this and then I can go into their note cards or their sources. Sorry, I went to the wrong place. Into their sources. And I can see all the sources that were added for that group along with their annotations. And then students, once they get them all in there and edit them all, they can print it out and they're going to upload it into Canvas as an annotated bibliography. So that's what they're working on in week two. And so this is the assignment that they see. They're using um, Noodle Tools and Perusal again for this. And so I give them links to quickly get to things. Um, click this link to uh, get the project template. I create a template for them in Noodle Tools. And then I teach them how to share the project, share it to the project inbox. And if they don't get it, there's a link to some instructions. There are the four new articles. And so basically they just scroll down and follow the directions. The second part of this assignment is to set up their outline. And so like I mentioned before, I created sort of an outline template for them. This is an example of it. And the outline template is also in Noodle Tools. So when I click on note cards, this is one of the, one of the group's projects. Here's the template that they have already started to add. And so they assign each other parts of this essay to write. So Dirk has part one, and Chamberlain has part two, and Chamberlain has part three, Chris has part four, and so therefore. And so they've already edited this outline template. And so I provided for them this is what it looked like before they got to it. Okay, and so then this is an explanation of how I want for them to submit their work to me. And again, links for instructions on how to do that if they don't understand it. And then the last thing I think is important is to show them an example of what the assignment should look like. So this is an example of the annotated bibliography and what it should look like when they're done with it. And then the outline, which is actually kept in Noodle Tools, I show them what it should look like in there. Okay, so giving them examples, rubrics to grade on how you're going to be grading it, examples of what the assignment should look like, and clear instructions are very helpful in getting this group project to go. Okay, and then the last thing is, we'll go back, and then in weeks three and four, they're basically working on the paper. So they get two more articles, it's not part of a, an official assignment to read and annotate those, but they can use them. They're really good. But we work on finding sources and how to integrate those sources into the paper at this point. Okay, so in-class activity is note-taking, creating the note cards and noodle tools, and then integrating sources into in-text citations and in-text citations. They have a couple more lessons, and then they have the assignment. And so the assignment basically gets them started on the group project and then they spend the next two weeks really just going through and finding the sources, the evidence that they need from the sources that I've provided for them. And so when I click on this assignment, again, it's a very detailed what this, uh, what you should be doing, what format you're using, what the paper entails, and then there's an example paper for them to look at. And the second one, or the first one, this one, talks about creating the outline and organizing yourself. So group member one will write this section, these two sections. Group member two will write these two sections, and so forth. And then again, this was an example of the outline template, and this shows how they've added note cards. So it works really well if the students show up and participate. If they don't show up and participate, that's where things start to fall apart. And so it's, the hard part is convincing them that this is important and that they should uh, stay involved. Don't leave your, your teammates hanging. Okay, so I'll create a second part if you're interested in, in seeing a little more detail about Noodle Tools and Perusal. Um, and, uh, but that's it for this.